The LA Clippers filled just about every hole they had in the roster after this trade deadline, right? But there is one position that people are still clamoring for, at least some of them, and that's the point guard position. Russell Westbrook, the name coming out of everyone's mouths to be bought out by the Jazz and come to the Clippers. In this episode, I'm going to be giving a case, two cases. One, why the Clippers should pick him up, and the other, why the Clippers shouldn't. At the end, I'm going to tell you what I think, and you should comment what you think on today's Locked On Clippers. You are Locked On Clippers, your daily Los Angeles Clippers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, sir. You are locking in with the Clips. Thank you for making Locked On Clippers the first listen of your day, your team every day. I'm your host, Darian Vaziri, in my 18th season as a Clipper fan. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod. And of course, subscribe to my own YouTube channel, Dime Dropper, for more Clipper content. Recently released a thank you video, video to Luke Kennard and a vlog of the last Clipper home game against the Mavericks, Kyrie Irving's Maverick debut. And this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. The midway point of the NBA season is here, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Going to be talking more about FanDuel later on. But in this episode of Locked On Clippers, I am going to be talking about Russell Westbrook, the man who was traded from the Lakers to the Utah Jazz, but is likely, likely to be bought out. And there's been three places rumored to be potentially inquiring about Russ. And that obviously he would be interested in. Miami Heat, Chicago Bulls, and of course, down the hall, the LA Clippers. And in this episode, I am going to be doing a debate style, or should I, you know, prosecution defense style, whatever you want to call it, courtroom, with myself. I will be making a case for why the Clippers should not pick up Russell Westbrook, shouldn't even look at it, but I'm also going to be making the case for why he should be picked up, why he would help the Clippers and would give them a better chance to reach their goals. And in the end, I am going to tell you which side I side with personally, and I want you in the comments on the YouTube to tell me what you think after I make both cases. So starting is going to be The prosecution, or should I say the side that does not want Russ. Here's why Russell Westbrook would be a bad fit for the Clippers. Russell Westbrook really hasn't played very good basketball in two years. Let's just start off with that. He hasn't played very good basketball in two years. The reason why I know this is because I watch Laker games a lot. Why is that? Because I live in LA and always grew up watching Laker games as well as Clipper games. And I am a big Russell Westbrook fan. I want to preface this by saying that because I really love the guy. I've rooted for him his whole career. I come from a UCLA family. I've been rooting for him since 2008. I even got to meet the guy once at UCLA camp, and he was a nice guy. So I have nothing bad to say about him. He's an all-time great first ballot Hall of Famer. But in the last two seasons, the only thing I can give Russell Westbrook for is he's still a good passer and he's available. He played in 78 games last year for the Lakers and 52 this year. So basically, like, damn near all of them. But here's the thing. These last two seasons, he's averaging his lowest points per game since his sophomore season with less than 20 points. Mind you, it's a much easier era to score in and many more points are being scored than in his sophomore year of 2010. That being said, he's also shooting... 42% from the field this year and an abysmal 30% from three both last year and this year. And he's shooting 3.4 attempts last year, 4.1 three-point attempts this year. For a guy that's shooting less than 30%, if we're just going off straight, not rounding, that is abysmal. And what the Clippers just had in John Wall is a guy who has a lot of the same Positive attributes as Russell Westbrook, but also the negative. He's good at pushing the pace. He is faster off the bounce than any clipper. He's good at finishing around the basket. 
He's a good passer, probably the best passer on the team. Both of them, you can say that about. But they can't shoot the balls, and they don't move without the ball much. So off the ball, they are quite disastrous. And the Clippers are a half-court team. We tried to have John Wall push the pace, but there's only about one or two guys that would really run with him and meet him at that pace. A lot of times it was just John Wall going one on four, and he didn't know how to calm down. And right now, you know, just knowing what we know about Ty Lue over the years, even dating back to Cleveland, that team was more of a half-court team. The Clippers, since Ty Lue has taken over, are more of a half-court team. I like when they run when they can, but I like when they run mostly off of creating turnovers from the other team. John Wall and Russell Westbrook are just kind of fish out of water on this team because they want to push the pace. It's a slower, older, half-court team, and they're both not great in the half-court offensively. Defensively, they both come with their problems as well these days. No threat off the ball. And then on the ball, in the half-court, they're not that great, and I'm going to describe why. Every team is going to invite Russell Westbrook to shoot the ball the same way they did John Wall. They're going to go under every single screen. They're going to sag off on him when it's one-on-one. And if I were the defense, just stay home on the shooters. Let Russell Westbrook go one-on-one. For Russell Westbrook, that is not that great. And the reason why is because he's lost a little bit of bounce. And, you know, I've just seen it the last two years with the Lakers. He's not finishing the same way he once was. It's crazy because the percentages, if you look at actually what his field goal percentage is by distance from zero to three feet throughout his career, it's actually not that low right now. It's actually the fifth fifth and sixth highest of his career the last two years in terms of field goal percentage by distance in terms of zero to three feet, but he's not actually shooting as many of them, and that's because he doesn't have that... I mean, he still has burst more than anybody on the Clipper team, just like John Wall. But he, I've just seen him miss a lot more layups and chippies than ever before. And also, he still comes with other issues that he's always had. Reckless turnovers, especially in crunch time. We already have Paul George to worry about in that department. And you saw it in OKC. I watched every single playoff game they played together. And they both had their costly turnovers in crunch time. So two guys that haven't won a ring have had their own, you know, getting in their own head in many ways throughout the years and are reckless with the ball in crunch time, regardless of Russell Westbrook's true playmaking nature, to me, that's a narrative. That's a narrative that people have put on the Clippers that they need a pass first point guard. But the thing is, how did Russell Westbrook for so many years create so many good shots for people? Because he was such a threat to get to the basket downhill, nobody could guard him. And his jumper was a lot better then. It was a lot better then. It has significantly declined the last five years or so. Because I remember 2018, he was still splashing jumpers in the playoffs. And 2017, I mean, he was hitting. He was hitting. He wasn't, he's never been a great shooter. But at least from the mid-range, he was reliable for a large portion of his career. But now, it's like you'll have him take any jumper. And the main problem I have with Russ is he may be even more, you know, reckless in terms of shot selection than John Wall. Teams will let him take a three, and he'll take it without even passing anybody the ball. He'll bring it up and just throw it up there. And that is something the Clippers cannot have. Because when Paul George and Kawhi off the ball, that is just going to make their lives tougher. They're going to totally sag off on Russ and double team and load up on Kawhi or Paul. And defensively, I've really watched them these last two years. The only time he actually puts in effort, in my opinion, is when he switched on to a big and they try to bully him. And he's like, nah, you're not about to weight room me. But besides that, he does not get over screens with any sort of of effort anymore when I've watched. And that's a lot. By the way, I'm not just a Clipper fan that watches Laker games here and there. I watched every single one damn near. And he struggled to get over screens. And any Laker fan that watched him all the time can attest to that. So in my, And this is the case for why the Clippers do not read Russell Westbrook. It's just a slightly better John Wall. They need somebody that is reliable right now in terms of getting to the basket and hitting the outside shot. That will open things up for Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, but also will be an off-ball threat so teams will get punished when they're double-teaming or loading up on any of those two guys. And the Clippers haven't really found that guy. That guy is not out there, so they got to work with what they've got, and I still think it's doable. You just got to get good performances from the role players and, of course, the best versions of Kawhi and Paul, which ultimately we expected when we signed these guys and brought them in. 
So that's that. Overall, that is the case for why Russell Westbrook would just be a better John Wall. It's redundant, and the Clippers are in no position to take risks right now in a championship or bust season. But coming up, going to give the other side, the defense. Why would it actually be a good move for the Clippers and Russell Westbrook? Maybe the key. Going to be talking about that coming up. The midway point of the NBA season is here. Now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drained. My favorite NBA bets of the week... Well, I'm taking the Clippers' money line on Tuesday against the Warriors because they got the new players coming in, the Warriors are on a back-to-back, and the Clippers have a couple of days of rest. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right. Let's talk about why Russell Westbrook would actually be a good move for the Clippers. Now, there's one thing the Clippers are really lacking, and that's a little bit of heart, a little bit of a vocal guy, some personality in terms of that starting lineup. And Russell Westbrook is exactly that. And here's the thing. Being a Laker is very different than being a Clipper. Being a Laker, you have the bright lights, the extra media attention, the worldwide fans that we just don't have here as Clipper fans yet. Or may never have in my lifetime. And that's okay. I don't really care. But the Lakers are just different. The Yankees, the Cowboys, the Lakers, these are the biggest American sports franchises. Forgive me if I left some off. But Cowboys, Yankees, Lakers... And when you think of American sports, those are the first two that come to mind in terms of worldwide, you know, branding. And playing for the Clippers, I actually think would fit Russ's personality well. An underdog kind of thing. The road less traveled by. Kind of trying to become a little bit more gritty type as opposed to, you know, Lakers since Jerry Buss. He created an image for that franchise. The glitz and the glam, the stars, Magic Johnson, Showtime. It's different. It's such a high standard. It's very rare that Clipper fans have booed their own players. Laker fans, they lost patience in Russ, and I I don't blame them. But the thing is, that roster was never a good roster for Russ. Playing with LeBron James, if you're a guy that likes to control the ball and playmake for others, you are taking a big hit. You look at the guys that have played with him in the past. What kind of players have succeeded around him? Mo Williams, catch and shoot point guard. Let LeBron handle the offense. Mario Chalmers, catch and shoot point guard. D. Wade took a big sacrifice to play with LeBron, and even that in the half court had its you know, questions at times. But when they were in transition, they were amazing. And plus in the half court, I mean, LeBron and D. Wade they were smart players. They could figure it out. Kyrie Irving score first not a guy that's going to play make for others as much he's a guy that lebron can rely on to go get a bucket in a different way that he can russell westbrook he loves to fill up the stat sheet like lebron points rebounds assists sets a tempo for his team dictate the game he wasn't really able to do that freely and lebron made some attempts here and there to try but it just never seemed to work because at the end of the day when lebron caught the ball He likes to turn and face and survey the floor. And that's when the second defender from Russ would come and load up. And then it's just the whole thing I talked about in segment one. But with guys like Paul George and Kawhi, especially with Paul George, that work quickly off the catch, just like Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook thrives with those kind of guys. You saw with Beal, who had his best points per game with Russ. You saw with Paul George, who had his best points per game with Russ. And Kevin Durant has had his highest points per game with Russ. That's not a coincidence. Russ has made very average players or decent players get a lot more money than they deserve. And I'm not going to name names. And the thing about Russell Westbrook is 
Yeah, this may have not worked out for him, but this is an outlier in terms of what teammates say about him. Even Kevin Durant, yeah, they didn't get along, but it's not like everyone has loved Kevin Durant either. He's been to a lot of different teams now. They each had their own egos, and they just weren't built to play with each other long term, and it is what it is. But for the most part, everyone else seems to love Russell Westbrook, say such great things about him as a teammate, and maybe that's exactly what we need. Paul George and Kawhi Leonard want a point guard very clearly. And not only will Russ maybe speed things up for us, he is better than John Wall still. He really is. And I know that because I do watch Laker games, and he still has moments where he gets to the basket, and he just still can explode. I mean, and I don't mean dunk like crazy, but just elevate on his layups. He's averaging 16 points, 6 rebounds, and 7.5 and assists on in 29 minutes. I mean, that's filling up the stat sheet, all right. 16, 6, and 7.5. And yes, he's averaging 3.5 turnovers and only shooting 42%. But we're not, we don't, I don't think the Clippers will ask him to play that many minutes. <laughs> that's the thing. They have to be cautious with his minutes if they bring him in. Sometimes he may not close, and he has to be okay with that. He has to be okay with that. And that ultimately is going to make or break if the Clippers try to go and make this move is. Russ needs to be okay with not closing because he can be detrimental even in his prime. Even though he's made big shots in the past, he could be detrimental sometimes at the end of games. And right now, I mean, you've seen it a couple times this season against the Philadelphia 76ers. Yes, he got fouled, but he should have given the ball to LeBron James. What's he doing there? And then just plenty of other instances I can name. The Portland Trailblazer game earlier, earlier this season. But overall, Russ can't help by just being the best passer on the team and maybe playing in a new environment with guys like Kawhi and Paul George wanting to prove everyone wrong because there's going to be magnifying glasses on the Clippers. It's not like even though I mentioned all that stuff about the Lakers being the Lakers and they had so many more views and fans and whatever, the Clippers in recent times, especially with Kawhi Leonard and Paul George, they got a lot of eyes on them and especially Russell Westbrook will always be relevant as long as he's in the league. And coming off the Laker move and the Laker disaster, he is going to be eager to prove everyone wrong. And if we can get that Russell Westbrook back that we saw in Washington, and I watched a lot of their games, and make let it be clear, in the second half of the season, he was the reason they made the playoffs. 22 points and 12 assists and 11.5 rebounds a game, 44% shooting, which is not great, but it's not horrendous, horrendous. And plus... He was doing it with such bad defenders all the way around. Daniel Gafford was like his best defender. Alex Led, Robin Lopez, Davis Bertans, Raul Neto, Bradley Beal, rookie Denny Avdia, Hachimura. Like these were the, these were his defenders out there, and he was taking dragging them to the playoffs. So the last time we saw Russ outside of the Lakers, he was still an All Star caliber player, averaging a triple double. We don't even need him to be that. We just need him to make Paul George and Kawhi Leonard's lives easier. And who knows if he can still clear guys off the dribble and get to the basket. Because here's the thing. The Clippers have so many more shooters than the Lakers. You can't just sag off of a Nico Batuber, Marcus Morris, or a Paul George, or even a Eric Gordon. You know what I'm saying? You can't just sag off of them like that so easily to pack the paint. If Russ gets by the initial defender, you're going to have to send a second one or he's going to have a wide open layup a lot of times. And I think he and Zoo in the pick and roll could be really good as well. So that's my case because the Clippers right now, yes, Russ would be the best passer on the team, but also he brings in some life. And if it's a resurgent Russ that wants to prove something, well then, Clippers got nothing to lose. Because the one thing he is, is available. And if he can bring some passion to this team, maybe some vocal leadership, and maybe that's exactly what the Clippers are missing. And coming up, I'm going to be talking about where I land after hearing both sides to decide it. As a small business owner or hiring manager, you know that success in 2023 all depends on the team members you surround yourself with. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire qualified candidates more efficiently by matching open roles with people who have the skills, values, and experiences to help you achieve your goals. I got my Rams ambassador job on LinkedIn, and 
if you want to actually find people for your business, then LinkedIn Jobs helps you quickly attract qualified candidates to your open jobs with targeting tools that go beyond resume data by using insights from your job post company and their 875 million member profiles to put your post in front of the most qualified candidates. It's 2023, the year is still young, and it's time to find the right team member that might help you do whatever you want to see done for your business. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockedonmba. That's linkedin.com slash lockedonmba to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. All right. We've heard both sides why the Clippers shouldn't get Russell Westbrook. We heard the defense. Oh, no. The Clippers should get Russell Westbrook. Where do I land? Well, I think what I said in the end of segment one is really where I land. The Clippers are in no position to take risks. Notice the argument I made for Russ was largely based on 2021 and stuff I saw then. Because even though the fit was horrendous, and I do believe what I said about LeBron, and he's better with guys that are, he likes having one guy that can score with him, but the third star, if there is one, usually takes a huge hit. Kevin Love, Chris Bosh, Russell Westbrook. They take huge hits. And if they like to play make, but the thing is Bosh and Kevin Love can still pick and pops. So they were still okay in doing what they needed to do as a third guy. Russell Westbrook, what he does, is he sets the table. He totally dictates everything. The thing is, the Clippers, I don't think they can take a gamble with this Russell Westbrook. And just the whole, you know, if he doesn't, what I said about him not closing games is very valid. Here's the thing. He didn't seem to take that very well in, uh, with Vogel and with him. He didn't seem to take that very well that he wasn't closing games. And Russ has acted a certain way about losing that I just don't find acceptable right now, where he just kind of shrugs it off like it's not a big deal. But I think that's partially just a cover-up for him being unhappy with the Lakers. So I do think there's some validity to him wanting to prove something, but I do believe what I said with the John Wall thing. He's just an upgraded John Wall to me right now. And Listen, I would love in an alternate universe, or maybe in this universe, if Russell Westbrook came to the Clippers and we won the championship, because I actually like Russell Westbrook more than Kawhi and Paul George before they became Clippers, seriously. But I don't believe that that can happen. I don't think Russell Westbrook will win a championship with a big role on a team, which is sad, but it's hard to win championships. And I don't know if Paul George will either. But I have more faith in Paul than Russ. And Paul's one of ours, so i got to stick by him. It's just too big of a risk, in my opinion. And plus, more than anything, he wasn't playing defense. And I can't just believe just because he'll be in a new situation at the age that he's at and the miles that he's logged, that he will just all of a sudden improve his effort tremendously on that end. Can't shoot the ball, doesn't move without it, makes questionable decisions, and doesn't play D. Overall, love Russ, but it just can't happen. It just can't happen. I think the Clippers are better off riding with the roster they have now. They got to back up big. It's going to have to be point guard by committee. They're going to have to do something that only teams that ran the triangle have done. Or, you know, a team with LeBron James, who's not a traditional point guard, but he's a much better passer than anyone we have. But yeah, hopefully they get it done that way. And they start off on Tuesday against the Warriors. Steph Curry is out. Everyone is healthy. So for the Kawhi Leonard question from the last episode, he is okay. He's okay, which is a sigh of relief, but it's just like, man, could he have played last game? He got extra rest. He's going to get a big rest for the All-Star break. Clippers got to win. No excuses. It's at home. Warriors are on a back-to-back. They played on Monday night. Clippers got to win. They have to win. Must win. And hopefully with the new signings, there'll be some energy. New si- I, should, I say new signings. Uh, new additions. New signings is a soccer term. But anyway, that's it for me today. Let me know which side you're on. Are you the side that we should get Westbrook or should we not get Westbrook? Thanks for making Locked On Clippers your first listen today. Now make your second listen. Game to Game NBA. Every moment, every top performance, every result. Locked On Game to Game covers every game from across the NBA with local analysis that only Locked On can deliver. Follow Game to Game on Locked On NBA. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Dime Dropper Pod. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, please. Dime Dropper. 
posted my thank you to Luke Kennard. My thank you to Reggie Jackson is coming. And a vlog of the Clippers-Mavs game. Clippers, Warriors, Tuesday night. Going to be having an episode on Wednesday for you. Enjoy your Tuesday, Clipper Nation. The age-old proverb continues. Go Clippers. Let's see how our new boys do.